Hi, this is Pavel with a uh, visual basic exercise. This is part two of our blackjack program. In the previous uh, video, we created the form, or I showed you the form, and we created the classes for the for the card and for the deck of cards. We shuffled the cards, and uh, at the end, we have the stack of uh, 52 cards or uh, or shuffled 52 cards. So now I'm going to create the actual game the logic behind it uh, as I mentioned in the previous video uh, this is a take two I already have the program running uh, uh, I already created it I just really shooting the videos because they came out really bad so this is gonna be faster than usually because I don't have to figure out anything I already did it before so uh, let's go to our uh, form this is the form if you missed the first video but if you missed the first video you probably should watch it uh, so uh, the first thing you're gonna do you're gonna uh, create a logic for the new hand when the new hand is clicked player is, get, uh, is given two cards and uh, by default and uh, the dealer is getting one card and then player goes and decides whether he wants to hold or uh, get more cards so I'll double click the button and um, well, there's few variables we will need uh, in the form level. In other words, we need to access them throughout the uh, the whole form. So uh, I'm gonna code those first. The first one is the deck, the deck itself, which is going to be a deck of cards, and this is basically the shuffled deck. Now, this is an array. Remember, we are doing also stack just for the practice. So uh, that's gonna be a shuffled deck, uh, and this is gonna be the stack of, and we are calling the card cards. This is the structure within the within the class called card. We have a structure called cards that contains the value and suit and the string value for each card. And uh, this is basically the the shuffled stack of cards. So shuffled stack of cards. Now we will need a player hand, and it's an array. And the maximum for the by the rules of the game, the maximum cards you can have is five. So if uh, you get five cards, you cannot get a you c the player cannot get a hit or cannot take another card. The same for the dealer. Five cards is the maximum cards that uh, a player or the dealer can have. So that's why we all we need to do is uh, an array of uh, four. Again, remember we're starting from zero, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, which is five elements or five cards. So it's gonna be again the cards. This is player hand, max number of cards is five. And we will of course need a, a dealer hand as the same thing, uh, dealer hand, max number of cards is five. Now we will need to kind of come up with the uh, the sum of the uh, of the values, you know, the, like is it 21 or we need we need we need to calculate the the value of the cards and keep it. So we need a, I'll just call it player sum, and it's going to be zero at the beginning. Then we have a dealer sum, and that will be zero as well. And since uh, if it's a if it is a draw, let's say both player and the dealer has a, a value of seventeen, a total value of seventeen. The another distinguishing thing uh, that determines the winner is the number of cards each player has, and the player with less cards would win. Like if the player has uh, two cards and the dealer has three cards, then the player wins. If they have the same value if both have let's say 17 and they both have uh you know two cards then dealer wins by default but if, 
that's the last uh, option. First, we need to, of course, like I said, determine who has how many cards because that can be a determining feature or determining thing for the winner. So we will do number of player cards as integer and number of dealer cards as integer. So these are the values or these are the uh, variables that we need throughout the forms, throughout the whole form. So um, now we can go to our uh, event handler for the when the new hand is click. So I'm gonna paste some comments for this. Uh, so when the new hand is clicked, we will create the the deck, and we will simulate the shuffling. So I'm gonna use a timer. And you'll see how it goes. Uh, that will kind of say shuffling, and then dot, and then another dot, and another dot, and then done. In other words, it will take three seconds to shuffle the cards. This is just like a little pause, kind of like the, like a visual visual simulation for the for the shuffling. And so when the the timer ends, we deal the initial cards, which is two cards for the player and one card for the dealer. Now before I go any further, I need to add the uh, um, the timer. So I'm going to, go to get the toolbar. Uh, toolbox, come on controls, and where's timer? Uh, it probably is somewhere else then. Uh, now I forgot where it is. Let me see components. Oh, there it is. So here's my timer, and uh, Timer property, I'll just call it timer, not timer one. And the interval, property value is not valid. Oh, I created another one by accident, so here's, here's my timer. Uh, and I will do interval of. Uh, 3000 which would be three seconds all right so uh, and by default it's uh, not enabled we will enable it in the code okay so uh, that's that so um, our um, we can go back to our new hand and start coding the uh, you know the, the logic uh, let me close this. I don't think we'll need that. I don't think we'll need this either. So, so I have a, a whole screen. Okay, so our new hand. The first thing we'll create the deck. So our deck equals new deck of cards. All right, and uh, we will our shuffle deck, which is the stack equals deck dot get shuffle deck that's the that's the sub that we are calling get shuffle deck i mean not not sub. it's a it's actually a property so the shuffle deck is the stack of cards already shuffled because remember in a previous video all this was done basically automatically once one once we create the shuffle deck over here the, the deck of cards when it's uh, initiate instantiated and the uh, the uh, constructor is called. It will call the create deck uh, sub, which creates the deck of fifty two cards. Then within it, we will call the shuffle deck, which will shuffle the deck and creates an array. And then it calls the shuffled stack, which will, at the end, finally uh, return the. Uh, stack of cards that is already shuffled so that, and that all happens over here once when we instantiate the object deck of cards all right so um, we have that and now we can populate the hand for the player and for the uh, for the user 
i as integer equals zero to four. Now this, these are gonna be empty for now. This is just basically creating the arrays for both player hand and for the uh, dealer hand. So it will simply create new card dot cards, like a placeholder. Right now there will be nothing in there, no cards actually. Uh, the dealer hand, I equals new card dot cards. All right, so that's our um, that uh, our arrays. Now we, let's take care of some uh, you know visual things. When I click new hand. Um, uh, I want to have these uh, buttons enabled. In fact, uh, when I start this, I don't know if there's going to be any bugs if it's going to start. Oh, it did. You can see I have this set to be disabled at the beginning when the form loads. But when I click new hand, I want to have these enabled because player needs to either hit or hold. So. Uh, once the new hand is clicked, and the, the the you know we go through instantiating the object and populating m empty empty hands, uh, we can do the the buttons. I call it button head, and I enabled uh, at the beginning uh, is set to okay. It has to be set to false over here. It is it is by default when it when it loads when the when the form loads, but if you play another game, afterwards if I click new after we finish one game I don't need to close the program I can just click new hand to play another game, so by default it's going to be false actually, the same with for the button that uh, hold uh, enabled equals false. And button new hand enabled equals true and that's because button new hand will be disabled throughout the program like a little later uh, once it is clicked uh, you know we don't uh, we want to disable it because I don't want a player to click new hand and play another game I want him to finish the game that uh, is being played at the moment so we will clear. Remember, this is our, our entry point uh, for the game, basically, the new hand uh, button. So uh, our list player hand uh, items that clear. So we will clear any previous games or any previous input or output actually. And a dealer hand items clear. We will clear the. I call it a message. TXT message. That's where it will output, you know, who's the winner. And we will in uh, prepare for another game. So the uh, player cards will again equal zero. Uh, player will have like no cards at, the, at this point yet. Uh, the same with the dealer. And we will reset the player sum to zero. And the dealer sum equals zero so this way basically we are preparing for another game now when the form loads for the first time this is already done uh, you know by default but again if you play another game I need to reset everything manually and the thing we are going to do we are going to enable the timer so it simulates, like I said, visually the shuffling and the message will start with the words shuffling. So when we start the form, it basically says shuffling and uh, then we call the uh, the the actual timer itself so uh, once it's enabled the timer kicks in so uh, let's call that uh, over here we'll do 
private sub timer tick and these are actually you know what I don't know why I'm coding it uh, I usually just go and click on the let's just double click on the timer and it will create it for me now uh, let me copy some uh, some comments so it will simply create a small animated effect when shuffling the cards and it puts together a message informing the user when the shuffling is finished so what it, it's very simple we have uh, over here it sets the words shuffling into the into the text box and we will add uh, dots to it and at the end it will say done so if a text message that text not equals uh, shuffling uh, shuffling da 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 this is the final of the shuffling message then we will add the dot text message uh, the text plus equals a dot uh, remember like, this is this is gonna be the final mm, view we will say shuffling and three dots so if it is not there yet we're not finished yet add the dot else when it is done uh, if it if it has three dots in other words it goes three seconds uh, then we will simply add, uh, finish it so a message that text plus equals done so it will say shuffling three dots and done we will disable the timer because we don't need it anymore equals false and we will enable the hit button uh, bu button hit because now the player will the cards are shuffled now the player can play oh not false but true and button hold enabled equals true because play player can either hit or hold and we will disable the new hand because again we don't want to deal new hand in the middle of the game so a new hand enabled equals false and then once this is all done we will call a method called deal cards which I'm gonna create next uh, cards so let me just uh, comment this out for now let's see how this thing works so if I click new hand we have the word shuffling and it should be the uh, I don't know if you can see it it's adding the dot but it's very slow I think I have it set up to too many seconds and when it's done it says done these two buttons are enabled and we can play the game except like I said uh, I want it a little faster than that uh, so solution uh, not solution explorer sorry I wanted the properties for my window for my timer Oh yeah, I have 3,000, uh, I just meant 1,000, one second intervals. Okay, so uh, we have that, so uh, let's do the deal cards, I'll, uh, uncommented. So our deal cards uh, will be again just a sub, private sub, deal cards. And uh, I'll paste some comments. This will be fairly straightforward. So it, the initial dealing is two cards for the player, one for the dealer. That's by the rules, right? So uh, at least the rules I found. I mean, there probably is a variety of different ways of playing this game. And we display the card. We will use peak. Remember, we have a stack of cards, so we can use peak. To look at the card that is on the top we will place it into uh, the player's hand and then we will remove it from the stock we, we don't we don't want it in the stack anymore 
All right, so um, a player hand, since these are the first two cards, so I know that's gonna be the player hand zero and one, because these are manually basically populated. Uh, so we will peek, not pop, we will peek. So we'll see what card it is and place it into a player hand. And then we will uh, pop it out from the deck and we will go to another card. So player, player hand one, that's the second card for the player. And it's the same thing, dot peek and shuffle deck dot pop and it will pop up the card that we just placed into a user hand we will pop it out uh, remove it from the stack and we will do the same for the dealer but the only one Billy only gets one card at the beginning so shuffled deck dot peak and shuffle deck pop so now player has two cards uh, dealer has one card and we remove those three cards from the stack so we can now display the uh, the values or the cards in the uh, uh, in the list boxes. So uh, you know what I'm just this is a uh, ah uh, never mind yeah let's do that let's just uh, so list box player hand that items that add and we are adding player hand the first card first so it's zero card value string and we are doing card value string because it could be like I said jack uh, we just want to display this is not to calculate any values yet and so it will say let's say jack and then it will say off and it, uh, after that it will simply say the suit so we will add the player hand that card suit and we will have to convert it to string so again it will say jack of hearts for example all right so um, that's the first card for the player i'll copy paste it uh this one will be the uh you know let me move this so you can see the whole thing this one will be the second card, so this is player card one. And I'll place it one more time, except this one will be with the dealer hand. Dealer hand. Uh, oh, actually, this is index one. I mean, index zero, because dealer has only one card. So dealer, dealer hand, zero. Yeah, so now this will populate the uh, first two cards so let's see what it does oh, what did i click if i click new hand it's a shuffling dot 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 done enables me to hit and hold and places two of spades randomly again this is from the stack four of hearts and nine of hearts for the for the dealer all right so that's the initial dealing the initial three cards uh, now we need to remember we need to keep track of uh, how many cards each the player and the dealer has so our number of uh, uh, player cards at this point equals two uh, uh, because it's the initial ones and number of dealer cards equals one and uh, now we also also need to display the actual score or the values of the cards in the text boxes so we will create a uh, sub called display scores and let's let's do that next time uh, so let's do that one now uh, I will just do private sub display scores this one's gonna be used several times so uh, and it's very simple it's uh, we will need to calculate the sums of the cards and we will need to check for the ace and 
assign a value to ace depending on you know whether or, or not whether it would be one or eleven which one would be best at the at the situation so i will create two more methods or two more subs and call them directly from display scores the first one will be called calculate uh, sums this will be basically the sums of all cards but it is you know 21 or if it's over already uh, and another one will be called ace check ace value and uh, once I do that I will have the actual scores and I will be able to display them so I will simply go the player text total which is the text box for the, the players total equals player sum to string and text dealer total dot text uh, equals dealer sum to string now let me place some comments over here this is very simple of course so it simply calculate and displays the total value of all cards so let's do the calculate sum uh, and the the ace so our calculate sums will be private sub um, and in it we will uh, let me again paste some comments so you can follow better what I'm doing but it's you know calculates the sum of all cards or the value of the cards for player and the dealer for both so the player sum that's the variable we declared up here remember player sum dealer sum that's the sum of the cards equals zero dealer sum equals zero at the beginning and now it's a simple for each loop in this case for each item as uh, card that cards in other words in the player hand or what, what cards the player has in the hand we will do player sum plus equals the value of the card so the card value and we will do the same for the for the dealer it's the same loop so except this one will be in dealer hand and this one will be dealer sum and that's all that's the sum as we calculated now remember now we calculated the sum but at this point the ace is by default 11 now we have to check if that's the best value if maybe we should make it one so the next thing we'll do is we'll check the ace value so our uh, private sub check ace value and let me paste some comments but I'll code it first and then we'll go over the comments in, uh, so you can see what I'm doing uh, so we will gonna we're gonna loop through the cards and find out if there's an ace in the hand like if the player or the dealer has, a, has an ace so for I s integer equals zero to four that's going through the suits because obviously that's what we are doing uh, if player hand I that card value string equals ace then obviously we have an ace on the hand and now we determine very simply uh, uh, what needs to be done if it is 11 by it is by it is 11 by default so if the sum is over 21 in other words the hand uh, the player would be busted or the dealer then we'll simply change the value to one so if our player sum is greater than 21 remember we calculated the sum already here uh, assuming the ace is 11 so and uh, only after that we are actually checking if that's the correct way to do it so if it is uh, if there's an ace and the sum is over uh, uh, 21 
then let's try uh, to change it to one. So uh, player hand i dot card value, not the card value string, just the actual card value. We'll change it to one, and we will recalculate the sum with the with the, now with the card value of one. All right. Because you can have more aces. You can have, let's say, the dealer gets, uh, the player gets cards, I don't know, two and ace. So at the beginning, it would assume it's, uh, you know, 13, 11, 2 plus 11. And it, it draws another card, and it's not an ace, for example. So now, that would be 24, so that's too much. So we change the ace to 1. So it's going to be 2 plus one is three, but the second ace still can be 11. We still can keep that because together it's gonna be uh, only 14. So we don't wanna change all the aces, you know, to to one. Only as many as, as are needed. In this case, it would be only the first ace. The other ace would still have the value of 11. That's why after we find an ace, we are recalculating the sum because uh, remember, player sum is a form level variable, so it will change over here. So when we go to another I iteration over here, the sum is already changed, so uh, it will check it again. And uh, in this case, it would not be greater than 21, it would be only 14, even with the second ace. So the first ace would be 1, the other would stay as 11, and this would be... Uh, basically calculated as, uh, yeah, it's good, we're good with the second ace uh, to keep the value of 11. All right, so, and we'll do the same for the dealer. So, uh, I will simply copy paste this. If dealer hand card value, so dealer hand, uh, let me spell that, dealer hand card value is ace, then the, we'll check the dealer sum, dealer sum, whether it's over 21, and if it is, dealer hand, card value is 1, and we will recalculate the sum. Uh, Alright, so that will take care of the aces, and we now have all the sums, we, we, at the end we will have the final well, uh, sum for both player and dealer, and now we can compare them and determine who the winner is. So that could be done simply by, you know, player starts first. So what happens when a player decides to hit? Uh, or other words, take another card or hold. So let's do the hit first. So if the player decides to hit, let me paste the comment. So when the top card from the stack is added to player hand, all right, so now player will have three cards. So we have to increase the number of cards in player hand by one. And if player already holds five cards, then no more cards are possible to add. Remember, only five cards are uh, available for each player. So when any of this happens, like if player already has five cards, basically we will automatically trigger even to deal cards for the computer because player is done uh, getting getting cards. All right, so uh, when we hit the uh, when we click the hit button, we will add uh, one to uh, our player hand. The computer doesn't look hit button. The computer is, gets the cards automatically, obviously. So this only applies for the player. So if the number of cards of the player cards is less or equal to five. Uh, remember, we are adding it now, so that could be the fifth card, so we are still good. We, we only take care, but if this would be the sixth card, then yeah, this we will not execute any code and we will simply deal cards for the computer. But if player still has uh, uh, five cards, if this is the one, two, three, uh, this is the third, fourth, or fifth card, basically, then we. Uh, we need to calculate the sum for the for the player. So uh, we will add our player hand 
and the index would be the number of uh, play cards remember in this case it would be the third card minus one because we start from the zero so this is the index uh, of the of the array of the player hand so this is the third card so it would be index two right so uh, and it equals the shuffle deck dot peak just like before and we will now shuffle deck dot pop remove the card from the uh, uh from the stack so uh with that we will now display the uh the card in the in the list box so i'll just copy paste this because this is gonna be the same thing so uh, uh our player hand except this one will be the index of number number of player cards minus one uh, and I'll do copy paste that over here as well so we will simply add this card to these uh, users I mean the players hand and at the end just like before we will display the scores and remember when we display the scores it calculates the sum and checks the ace values for us automatically right from the uh, from the sub so now if the number of uh, play cards if this was the last card if this is the fifth card then we can right after this we can simply hand the uh, the logic back to the computer or to the dealer because it's dealer's turn so i will i will call the button uh hold click event which i didn't actually create it probably yet because i have to, let me just double click that all right because remember when the user clicks hold it means he's done it's computer's turn so when there's more uh, this is the fifth card it's the same effect we basically trigger whatever will be coded and uh, hold which is the basically hold means all right calculate the dealer's hand now all right so um uh, th this is true then the button hold click now i have it here we'll simply call that and we have to pass some arguments but uh, by default but all we need to pass is nothing but we need to pass something even though it's nothing which is still in this case something as as far as the computer is concerned uh, okay so if the, this is uh, if we are playing we display the card if this is the last card available if this is the fifth card hand over the logic to the uh, computer now if this is uh, not uh if I, if i click it again which actually doesn't uh yeah well, let, me, let me see so uh yeah that's all that's really after this uh oops uh we simply check the score so if player sum is greater than 21 in other words player got, uh, took a card and now the score is greater than 21 then it's over again uh, because the player player is busted player's hand is too too much so the dealer basically wins so nothing so again we can just call the uh, hold button which triggers the computer action all right so that's that and let's create the code for the hold button and i'll paste some uh, some comments quite a few so once player clicks hold button or if player has uh, five cards or the player basically has uh, uh he's busted and it's uh, sum is over 21 then the dealer's hand is assembled now the dealer's minimal hand is set to 17 but not really 
actually. That that was my initial thing. The, uh, the deal I will be actually uh, trying to match the uh, the player because obviously why would play uh, deal I want only 17 if player has 18? There's nothing uh, else player can uh, the dealer can do other than risk it. Otherwise, it would automatically lose. So you have to the dealer has to uh, you know at least match what the player has. Anyway, if player is over 21. Dealer only needs to draw one more card to win. Now, the way I have it set up is that dealer draws until hand of 11 is reached. It's very simple. Uh, if the initial card is an uh, is an ace of 11, then basically uh, dealer only needs another card, uh, and, and it, uh, the dealer wins. Let's say if the card is 10, again only another card. Is needed or uh, if the dealer has hand is two then uh, you know he can draw another card and let's say it's three the, the total is five so he'll draw again uh, but even if he uh, hits the highest card which would be eight he still wins in other words he, ca he cannot lose uh, as long as uh, all he's trying to reach is 11 so in a, this may result in drawing more cards than one, but the score will never go over 21. So the, uh, if the player's score will go over 21, the dealer will win. With this logic, the dealer will win. Now, if player is not over 21, the dealer tries to match player's score. Dealer wins if the scores are the same. A assuming that the dealer doesn't have more cards than the, than the player. Now we check if the hand is over 21 after we draw a new card, uh, well, just like we did for the for the player. And at the end, uh, you know, when we're done, uh, either it's over 21 or it it reached the maximum, uh, then uh, the game is over. So our button hold the logic itself. We need to first. Uh, disable a few buttons like the hit because this is a uh, this is the computer stern so we don't want these enabled so button uh, hold equals false and we'll uh, do a, a, I'll call it score to reach as integer that's basically the score that the computer will try to reach in order to win so if player sum is greater than 21 in other words if player is busted then score to reach is the 11 else score to reach equals whatever the player has so the player sum that, we, that the computer will try to match. Now we go uh, while dealer sum sum is less than score to reach and the number of dealer cards is less than five. Again, the only uh, even dealer needs uh, cannot go over five cards. Uh, score to reach. Uh, then the number of dealer cards. We will add one to it. Basically, the dealer will take a card from the from the stack. So the dealer hand, and just like with the player, the number of dealer cards. That's the index. Minus one because we start from zero equals. We'll look at the top card in the stack and then we will remove the top card from the stack and we will display dealer hand dot items dot add and we will, we will add the the card so the dealer hand the number of dealer cards minus one dot uh, not card value but card value string because it, like I said before it could be ace uh, or you know 
some other like jack queen or king and we will add the same thing we will say jack of so it will have the dealer hand number of dealer cards minus one this is a long line dot the actual card value uh, so actually let's make it to string so again it will say like jack of uh, oh not card value I'm sorry card suit jack of hearts and just like we did this is the same logic like with the player basically we will display the scores and it will you know recalculate the sum in case there's an ace so display scores and if the dealer sum is greater than 21 well it's just too bad dealer got busted so we will do the text message equals and it will say something like dealers hand is over 21 player wins and um, yeah that's really all actually uh, one few things so there's we need to uh, button new hand enabled we will set it back to true remember we are playing a new game after because this is over so we can start a new game if you want to button hold dot enabled will now equal to false and uh, if this is true if this is over then we can exit sub we don't have to do anything else and um, also no that's all yeah but if the player I mean if the dealer is not over 21 then we will uh, you know we will have to determine who the winner actually is so we will disable the hold button because one way or another the game is over and we will call a sub called game over which will determine the winner and that's the last thing to do so private sub game over let me just place some uh, some comments in there And it's very simple if the player sum is over 21 then it's the opposite then the text message the text equals players hand is over 21 dealer wins and we will do the button new hand enabled equals true for the new game we, have, we are ready to play another game and exit the sub we don't have to check anything else now if the player sum equals to the dealer sum then we determine the winner based on how many cards each player has so if the number of uh, dealer cards is less or equal to remember dealer wins if the number of cards is the same uh, the number of player cards then the dealer wins uh, text message text and we will say something like player has and how many cards uh, well first this the score so player has whatever the score is and uh, 
let me see what the message I have over here so I can just type that so and the number of play cards so it will say player has let's say 17 and three cards uh, so it says cards dealer has and it will be the dealer sum and dealer sum and uh, whatever the number of uh, dealer sum and uh, I missed some. Oh, I missed the. Come on, it keeps moving. There, Jesus. There. Okay, so and and over here, the number of dealer cards. Okay, so let's do that. On uh, the new line. I should have just copy pasted cards and the dealer wins okay that was a little long but it says player has 17 and three cards dealer has 17 and let's say two cards or even three cards dealer wins if the like i said if the score is the same and the number of cards is the same the dealer wins by default else and i'm just really gonna copy paste it this time because it's the same message if if the dealer card uh, is greater then the player wins of course it's just the opposite and we will enable the uh, new hand equals true and we can exit sub because the game is over we can play another game if we want to but there's nothing else to really check and um, so if player sum is greater than dealer sum remember this is after we already check if it's over 21 if it, if it, this is not true then we know it's not over 21 oh i forgot and if over here i think yeah so this is the last check if the player sum is greater than dealer sum and we know it's uh, under 21 then uh the player wins i'll just copy paste the message this template says the same thing player has let's say 17 and dealer has I don't know, uh, 16 or something or player has 21 dealer has 20 or whatever player wins and uh, this will probably never even happen because we all, the player the dealer always tries to match at least match the uh, the player so I think this this will actually never even happen but eh, I already have it coded so else it's the opposite it means that the dealer sum is greater than player sum and that can actually happen right never mind um, because dealers dealer sum dealer is trying to match uh, so if player has 17 the dealer will play until it has at least 17 but it can have of course more it can have 18 and then it will stop because it wins the dealer, dealer will win in this case all right so uh, and the button new hand enabled equals true so we can start a new game and i believe this is really all let's run it so this is really long now so this is the beginning click new hand shuffling one two three done okay i have 11 which is uh 
uh, five of diamonds, so five. And uh, by default, it, uh, five and six is uh, 11 and two of spades, that's okay. So I'll get hit. Oh, I got 21, there you go. So I'm gonna hold and the, the uh, dealer tries to match at, you know, 21. So it goes all the way and busts and so dealer hands it over 21, player wins. But notice there's an ace here. So it starts with two and a queen would be 12 and four is 16 and it still needs to go and it gets an ace and it knows that it's not 11, that it would be only one. So it takes it as one, which is 17, but the next card is 10, so it's 27. So I click new hand, and shuffling, 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 done. So a four and seven is 11, that is correct. I got 15, I'm gonna hold just to see what the computer is gonna do. And the computer actually got 15 as well, two, three, and 10. But it has three cards, I have three cards, the dealer wins by default because it has the same number of cards and the same score. So shuffling, 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 let's play again. So it's 18, I'm gonna hold. And it played until it reached at least 18, two and eight was only 10, so it tried again, 10 in this time, and it knows to stop because it's already over 18, it already won. So, uh, and let's try it one more time. Seven and seven and 14, I'm gonna try it, 17, I'm gonna hold. Oh, I should've gone, that's fine, this card was free. But again, the dealer tries uh, to match, which, uh, 10 and 3 is 13, so it tries one more card, 5, 18, it knows to stop, it, and it wins. Ah, uh, one more, just for the good measure. So I have 20 with 2 cards, so I'm gonna hold. Oh, the good thing, uh, so it got 20 as well, but player wins because we have 2 cards and the dealer has 3 cards, which I misspelled the word cards. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna fix that quickly. And uh, actually, no, I didn't misspell it. Never mind. It looks like it's a little crooked. Whatever, doesn't matter. The, the logic is there. The game seems to work fine. So um, yeah, this is all there is to it, which was you know fairly complex. But I hope uh, you were able to follow it. I'll make the code available for download, so uh, you can play with it. And if you like the video, please like the video and. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not yet. So uh, I'll see you next time. Take care.